I came here 15 years ago because the Boston Children's Museum already had a reputation for doing amazing stuff. To be way out in front in dealing with kids and dealing with tough issues regarding kids. My name is Lou Casagrande. I'm President and CEO of the Boston Children's Museum. And when I had the chance to come here and be director, I was thrilled. And in my 15 years, we worked on many different projects, but none makes me happier than the green, the green project and, and building the first green museum in Boston. When I think of green, I think of it's, uh, an awareness of the environment and the choices you make. It really should mean environmentally friendly and you know, trying to think of whatever you're doing and how that impacts. Not only you know what's going on in the earth now, but how it might impact what's going on in the earth in the next generation and the next generation and so on and so forth. Green is about stewardship of the environment and the understanding of, sort of the interconnectedness of things in nature and understanding that the things that we do have an impact on the world around us and vice versa. My name is Neil Gordon and I'm the Chief Operating Officer. I think we're doing something that people have not done before, which is to turn a green building into an effective teaching tool for younger children and, and their families. Well, since the museum decided to, that green needs to be a big part of it, we've really committed to doing that in you know everything. My name is Alyssa Daniels, and I am the science program manager at the Children's Museum. Of course, the building is LEED certified green. The employees, we've created a green handbook. So we all should be reusing silverware at our desks, recycling what we can, um, giving scrap paper to the art studio, um, using mugs instead of paper cups, all those kinds of things that we're doing ourselves. And that, you know, it all ties together with what we're teaching our visitors. So what the, what the Boston Children's Museum has become, it's become a kind of big community of practice now, and now around green. The green project is, um, is probably going to take a lot of different forms in the museum, but one particular form is to create a kind of trail that goes through the museum so that visitors have it be part of their museum experience. My name is Gail Ringel. I am the Vice President for Exhibits and Production at Boston Children's Museum. Some of the things that would make this really fun, I think, are um, the ability to put your hands on something and do something and see a result. Um, and with luck, we'll be able to do that in a way that it connects people to a visible feature in our building. And in fact, that's the challenge of telling the story of Green Building. We're lucky in that we have a number of features that are relatively easy to demonstrate. Uh, we have a green roof on the building that uh, demonstrates the, the value of stormwater retention, of increased insulation, uh, of reduction of heat island effect, um, that it's, it's a very powerful and very obviously visible and attractive uh, teaching tool. The things that are less obvious and more difficult to explain is all the materials in the building have a high level of recycled content. They look just like any other materials. So how do you demonstrate that? And that's actually going to be the challenge of our, of our work in, in turning the building into an exhibit, is to sort of demonstrate principles that sort of don't appear to be different, don't appear to be obviously unique, but in fact are. Mm -hmm. It's really nice to have that space on the second and the third floor, though especially the second floor, where you can just be right next to this, you know, living piece of architecture. and. Oftentimes people go up there and they'll say, oh, look at the garden, but you know, there's actually like a lot more depth to it than that. My name is Brian Studer and I am the Green and Environmental Science Fellow at the Boston Children's Museum. I have a big box of red wiggler worms so that kids will get to. You can pull one out um, and have them play with it in their hands. Instead of driving to school, um, like walk to school or ride your bike. People feel really strongly that if you don't, um, if you don't start communicating messages around sustainability when people are really young, that 
you kind of lose the opportunity to have it come as second nature. They She's very, um, she's very up on littering. She knows that's a litter. She sees things on the ground, she'll say that person litters. So trying to protect her by the time. They have been taught not to litter, and this is a way not to litter, because there's a trash can. So now the next step is to teach them not only not to litter, but also what to do with their trash. Which is some of it does go in the trash can, and some of it should go in their recycling bin, too. And they love it. Considering how young they are, they get into it. They really do. If we put something in the wrong bin, we get in trouble. <laughs> Well, in our home, it means reducing our carbon imprint. So we don't, we try to reuse, reduce, recycle the simple things. Don't waste water. Recycle our papers, our cans. Um, don't leave your car idling. Simple things that we're trying to do. Which is the last portion of our, our work, which is really everything we're describing as Korea at home, which would be an, an easy way for kids and their families to take the things that they've learned here and apply them in their own lives. You can tell her about how you helped in our town clean up. Yeah, I want to tell her about the day when we were um, like bike riding, riding in the woods in the old woods. Tell her. Well, we were bike riding and we were picking up all the soda bottles and cans that we that were on the ground. And well, we went to this. Like, we didn't notice the sign that said no trespassing, but <laughs> we went through, and there was Oh, and, this was the farm, right? Yeah. yeah. Right. And there was, like, this old farm, and we went into sort of in the woods. We, we made, we found piles and piles of old, rusty old cans. And glass bottles. Yeah. And what did we do? That's right. He's passionate about the aluminum cans and the bottles. Not only does he make a nickel, <laughs> but he loves to clean up. The, the working idea behind this interpretive project is um, to make a, a trail that allows you to follow uh, your way around the building and see all of the green elements. But at each, at each spot on that trail, there would be a series of interpretive, interactive, fun, and engaging uh, activities that would be formatted as, as if it were a game um, that would draw kids and their families into sort of a, uh, a learning, competitive mode, if you will, um, and, and allow that game to continue past the experience at the museum into their own home and their own lives. Um, we sort of see that the notion of uh, the green game is, you know, you win, the environment wins, you know, everybody wins, and we want them to go home and continue scoring whatever that means uh, in, in the green game. So that, that's sort of the exciting part, is to, be, is to be, have the Children's Museum be a leader, but a leader of a whole movement, uh, and a whole movement that's going to help kids grow up to live lightly on the earth. End of story.